acanthosis nigricans. And what this is, is essentially a benign skin disease. And the most important thing to remember about it is that it reflects an underlying medical condition. And most commonly, this medical condition is either obesity or insulin resistance. And sometimes it can be associated with malignancy. And in particular, malignancies such as lung cancer or gastric cancer. Now, in terms of the pathophysiology of acanthosis nigricans, essentially what's happening is that the tumors can sometimes produce epidermal growth factor. And this epidermal growth factor can then go on to uh, produce acanthosis nigricans, the benign skin disease. Also, sometimes obesity and diabetes can activate the skin cells, and in particular, the epidermal keratinocytes. So those are the elements of the pathophysiology of acanthosis nigricans. In terms of symptoms or physical exam findings, commonly used terms to describe this on a clinical vignette include hypertrophic, velvety, hyperpigmented, and they are referred to as plaques. In terms of the color, the skin can appear yellow or dark brown or even gray. And the skin is often described as appearing dirty or darker than normal. And essentially what you have is a situation where you have thickening and hyperplasia of the epidermis. And I have a couple pictures to show you. And here they are. This one here involves the back of the neck. And this one here is the axilla or armpit. And as you can see, there's a very characteristic uh, uh, appearance to this type of skin disorder. In terms of locations, the most common locations where this can appear are the posterior neck, which is sometimes referred to as nape, N-A-P-E. The axilla is also a very common location or armpit. Other locations include the groin or inner thighs. It can also appear in the vulva or in the umbilical area. In terms of diagnosis, other than the uh, clinical aspect of it, which is just looking at the rash, you have to look deeper into what possible underlying medical condition can be present. And one of the underlying medical conditions that acanthosis nigricans is associated with is insulin resistance. So you definitely should order a glucose level, an insulin level, and then check if the person indeed has diabetes by checking the hemoglobin A1c. If you are suspicious of an underlying disorder that is malignancy, like such as a gastric cancer or a lung cancer, then you should do the appropriate imaging studies such as an abdominal CT or a chest CT. In terms of treatment, you have to of course treat the underlying cause obesity or hyperinsulinemia or the malignancy. But in terms of treating the actual skin condition, there are certain medications that can be used. First uh, line is a medication such as ammonium hydrate, retinoic acid, and any of the vitamin D analogs. Second line includes some more stronger uh, medications such as isotretinoin, acanthosis nigricans that's not helped with these uh, initial medications. You can use laser or even surgical excision. Your patient, 45 year old white woman, complains to you of having irregular menses, being overweight, and having hair on her upper lip. On exam, in addition to the foregoing, you notice a pigmented, velvety thickening of the skin three to four centimeter patches on her dorsal neck surface and deep in the axilla. Her palms and some lingual areas are unremarkable. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? The description is very characteristic that it's uh, velvety, it's hyperpigmented, and it's also in the back of the neck and axilla. And 
she probably, if I had to choose the most likely, I would go with E. acanthosis nigri cans. Next question. 44-year-old Asian man comes to the office for a health maintenance exam. He does not take any medications routinely, has no diagnosed medical problems. He does not smoke or drink alcohol. On several occasions, he has tried diet and exercise to shed some weight without success. He is an obese male with hyperhidrosis. There is hyperpigmentation with a velvety appearance on the nape, which is the back of the neck, and bilateral axillae. He has similar lesions in the groin area. Oral mucosa and palmoplantar surfaces are unremarkable. The abnormal lab test result that is most likely correlated with these findings is an elevated. Well, what are the conditions? that are associated with acanthosis nigri cans. We have obesity, we have insulin resistance, and we have malignancy. And the most common lab test that you can do very easily to get an idea of what's the underlying medical condition are tests that go after diabetes such as glucose, insulin level, and hemoglobin A1c. Next question. 55-year-old woman complains to her physician that the skin of her armpits and groin keeps getting darker and darker. Physical exam demonstrates velvety brown and warty skin in the axilla and groin. Bio biopsy of these lesions shows a variably hyperplastic epidermis with many sharp peaks and valleys. Aside from cosmetic considerations, which of the following is the primary medical significance of these lesions? Other than hi obesity, hyperinsulinemia, or insulin resistance, one very serious underlying medical condition that's associated with acanthosis nigri cans is any type of malignancy. And of the answer choices listed, the one that yells out is that there may be a sign, a visceral carcinoma. And finally, a patient presents to the dermatologist because of skin changes. The skin is hyperpigmented, thickened, and feels velvety. Multiple skin tags are present. The skin changes are worst in the axilla, groin, and anal genital area, but are very widespread. The patient should be specifically evaluated for which of the following diseases. Again, very similar question in that they're trying to make a connection between the skin condition and an underlying medical condition. And of the choices listed, the most relevant to acanthosis nigricans is B, lung cancer.